Rack and Stack, installing UPS power. By the time we're done here, you will be able to size, install, and configure an uninterruptible power supply. Oh man, this is bittersweet. We finally reached the end in the final step where we're installing UPS power to stabilize our devices if there's any kind of power fluctuations in the company. And that's awesome, but I'm also looking and I'm going, man, we've reached the end. It feels like we just got started. Well, all good things must come to an end, but keep in mind this is just the beginning of your technology journey. Let's discuss the need for UPS. There's both the obvious and the not so obvious need. The obvious need is when the power goes out, we want our system to stay online and at least gracefully shut down. For example, you may have a lot of servers that are sitting inside of the rack that are powering different services inside of your organization. Those servers, if you just pull the plug on them, which is what occurs when a power outage happens, will often shut down in a dirty state. Depending on the complexity of your infrastructure, they may not come back up the way you want them to. You could have data loss, you could have server virtual machines that have gone corrupt. I mean, there's all kinds of bad things that can happen there. And it's just bad for the hardware. That's the obvious side. The not so obvious side is now with our internet of things and voice over IP and video streaming, almost everything can be tied to the organization's network infrastructure, video surveillance, security systems, IP phones, making emergency calls. If the power goes out and all of that goes down, you may be up a creek. Depending on the size of the UPS that you choose, you could keep the company operational for hours even after the power goes out. Finally, a UPS delivers stable power. Brownouts, flickering power, all those kind of things are stopped at the UPS, which prevents your equipment from being damaged. Now I want you to notice there are two kinds of UPS units here in this picture, a standalone and a rack mount. You usually see the standalone ones in smaller businesses where you've got water closet MDFs or sitting under people's desks and things like this. This is usually what you'll see in an organization that's a lot more serious about their uh, UPS power. And this is a 2U unit, but there are some UPS units that can get into 8U, 10U, I mean, giant batteries, some that can fill an entire 42U rack. It all depends on the size. Keep in mind, there are data centers that consume more power than a small town. And there are batteries that can power that entire data center, at least temporarily, while generators are being powered up. That's the drawback. If you have a generator that's feeding power to a facility, there's always a gap before that generator can power on. When you have an immediate power cut, you have to have something in the middle that can take over and supply power immediately. That's the UPS. Generator warmups usually range from one to five minutes. Now in terms of price, I can tell you that these two units that I have pictured right here are exactly the same voltage, as in they're delivering the same amount of power, they have the same size battery, but just because this is a rack mount unit, you're probably gonna see a 25 to 50% price increase between the comparable standalone unit. That's because the people that make these things know that the rack mount units are getting installed in organizations that are serious about their business, and likewise, these are usually a lot more sturdy from a physical design. To determine what UPS size we need, we need to first off figure out what equipment is going to be in the rack that will be powered by the UPS and how much wattage is consumed by each one. Now you should be able to pull the data sheets on each one of the devices. For example, this is the Edge Router Pro that we installed. And I look right here and say, okay, that's got a 60 watt power supply. The SG300 28PP switch that we installed has a system cost of about 31 watts of power, 32 watts of power, but if I actually use all the PoE ports to their capacity, I could end up consuming 222 watts. You gotta keep that in mind. IP phones, wireless access points, video cameras, things that receive their power via PoE can consume quite a bit and put a huge strain on the UPS power supply. Usually wireless access points consume somewhere around 10 to 15 watts. IP phones consume somewhere between seven to 10 watts. I usually just count every single port that I'm going to have PoE for 10 watts. So start adding it all up. There's your 60 watt Edge Router Pro. There's your 31 watt SG300 and add all of the ports that have PoE. And essentially you come up with a total wattage that you need for that. Then you need to determine how long you want that to run for should the power go out. I'd say 30 minutes is good value. Then head on over to Google and type in something like APC UPS sizing. APC is just one of the most common 
companies that creates UPS equipment. So I'll click on that. I'll head over to the server room, network closet. I'm going to say by load is what we're after, not by device. And it's going to have a little wizard and say, okay, well, what is your total load? And I'll just say my server room, I came up with 400 watts. My voltage is 120 volts. I'm in North America. Uh, extra power for future expansion because they're want wanting you to budget for the future. I'll just say 5%. That's fine. Runtime during power fail, 30 minutes. Hey, it's already there for me. Rack mountable. Yes, I do want that. Do I want redundancy? Well, not for the office that we're in right here. I think one will do just fine. Hit submit and boom, there's our recommendations from APC of the size of UPS that we should buy. And you can see right there is the runtime next to each one of them. So if we want to really want to go all out and last longer than an hour, then the APC 3000 VA rack slash tower solution is the way to go. Keep in mind, some of these also have add-on units. So for instance, if you buy a certain size of one and later on you're like, oh man, I really want to go bigger than that. You can actually buy an expansion battery that snaps into that and continues to supply power after the main battery dies. Last thoughts on the UPS is first off, over budget power. <laughs> no one cares that you saved $100. My thought on that is a lot of times we as IT people are like, yeah, I want to get you know the budget way and save the company a bunch of money. And we kind of go for that short term win where we come in and we're like, hey, it's only going to be $400 for UPS. And they're like, wow, last IT guy said it was going to be $1,200. You're awesome. And you're like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, that's all great until the power goes out and you get like a three minute runtime because everything starts shutting down. The battery wasn't big enough. Or you went with some off brand UPS. And I can't tell you how many outages I have seen because the UPS itself, after a year or two years, just starts flickering and all the devices attached to it go down and go up and then the UPS just completely dies. If you buy a name brand UPS, you can expect a normal battery life of three years or longer. They have come a long way from what batteries used to be. I mean, I look at Tesla cars and they're saying, hey, you don't have to replace those car batteries for seven years. That's amazing. Now, something that you'll notice when the batteries start going bad is they start getting hot. So if you have monitoring on your UPS, a lot of people have environmental monitoring, you can actually watch the temperature and if it starts going up, you know the batteries have gone bad. The batteries will also swell in many cases if you leave them unchecked. Even though the batteries can often last longer than three years, in mission critical network environments, I would suggest just replacing them anyway. I'm back to this thought right here. Now I've gone with the APC website recommendation and purchased one of the 1500 volt rack mountable smart UPSs. Let's get that guy installed. All right, I've unboxed the UPS and the first thing that you want to do with every UPS is connect the battery. Now just about all of them are the same way. They'll have the battery stored behind some kind of tray. <laughs> and I, I've done it. I think just about everybody I know has done it. When you first pull out the battery, it actually says to connect the battery, if you look at the little tab, uh, lift and pull tabs, remove the battery and turn the battery over. And so you sit here and you go, okay, lift and pull, pull the tab. So you start peeling off this thing. It, it, that's not what it means at all. It literally means pull the battery out by the tabs like I just did. Flip it over and it says right on the front, insert this way to connect the battery and slide it back in. Boom, that battery is now connected with the faceplate back on. Now I always like, when I, when I first get these UPSs out of the box, I like turning them on because they usually have some charge from the factory. Just lets me that I've got the battery connected. So I'll hold down the button. It says beep, runtime in minutes, 197 minutes. So this already has some charge on it and that's good. And I'll quickly turn it off to save the annoying power is out beep. There we go, good, okay. Next thing is to get the rack mount ears put on there. I've got these guys, which are uh, nice and beefy and thick because this thing weighs probably 50 or 60 pounds. So it's gotta be heavy to hold this thing up. So I'll put these on the sides. Good, and other side. Good. And last but not least, we've got to make this thing look good. Let's put on the faceplate. Yeah. I'm going to mount that guy at the bottom of this rack and I'm going to put the cage nuts in before I lift that beast up here. Good grief. That'll do. I'm going to open this rack up so I have some leverage from behind. This is not easy. 
Ah! Blood blister! A smart man would find a friend right now. Oh, you will not defeat me. Ha 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 ha! Screw number one. It's only a matter of time now, my UPS friend. It's in. Now, I want you to see this thing from the back. You can see that it's first off hanging down a little bit because there's no way it's going to be able to hold the weight of this entire thing just with those four screws in the front. But notice how far it's coming out of the back. That's why I was saying earlier, it's not wise to move those front rails back too far because we don't have too much space in the back to fit something of this size. We'll run that power cord down and plug it in. Now I'm gonna take the power cords from these switches and move them up to the UPS. Network outage begins. There we go. Now I'm just going to wire tie all these cords in the back. Velcro it up. And close it down. Good. Looks like right now with the current load on this guy and the current battery charge, we've got 49 minutes of runtime. That's awesome. That means the power goes out, everything stays running in this rack, and we still have more to go because it's still charging this guy back up to what the battery was when it shipped. Notice the load up there is very low. So this UPS is a strong UPS to run this entire rack. Awesome. Now I mentioned at the beginning that you will be able to size, install, and configure an uninterruptible power supply. So here's what I want you to do. Envision the equipment in your network rack and determine a conservative value of wattage required to keep your equipment running. From there, find a UPS vendor such as APC or CyberPower or many of the other UPS vendors out there to determine which models of UPS would fit your environment. Compare the cost of a managed UPS, meaning one that you can actually monitor and get reports on, versus an unmanaged UPS. Finally, size, select, and purchase the UPS that you'll use for your home or office environment. Now, I will tell you, if you are on a budget-strapped lab, I have found Costco to have some really good UPS units for like $80 or $90. But I've also seen those same UPS units die out when people use them in production environments after two or three years. And when they die, they die hard. All the equipment goes down that's plugged into them. Personally, I use the Costco stuff in my house, the APC stuff, in business. From there, install the UPS in your environments. Bonus points if you get in there and set up management and monitoring on those UPSs so you're notified if the power goes out or if the battery's low or needs changing or anything like that. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.